Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. I want to read a verse of scripture to you, make a few comments. We're going to pray and then we're going to enter right into worship. How many of you came to worship the Lord today? Amen. You got your hearts in the right place? Are you pure in your thinking? It uh, doesn't mean you're perfect, but it means your, your focus is on pleasing the Lord. Paul said in the New Testament, Paul said, Above all things, above everything in my life, I make it my aim to be pleasing to God. That needs to be our aim. So listen to this verse real quick. Proverbs uh, chapter 22 says this, He who loves purity of heart and has grace on his lips, the king will be his friend. King will be his friend. If you have, if you love having a pure heart, you've got grace on your lips. That means you control your conversation, and, and you ask God to fill your mouth with good things. And if that's your desire in life, the King will be your friend. So, do you understand? I think you do. I think we all do. That when we come in to worship the Lord on a Sunday morning or whenever it might be, when we approach the King. That's what we're doing. We're approaching the king. There's nothing more important than being in a good relationship with the king when you approach him. You don't want to walk up to a king that's angry with you, right? And fortunately, our God has made it really easy for us to be his friend. All we have to do is come through the blood of the Lamb. So this morning, why don't you join me and just lift your hands up toward him. Let's just open our hearts up to God. Father, right now we worship you. Lord, we approach you this morning and remembering that you are the King of glory. The King of glory. And you, you speak to the gates and you command them to open on our behalf. Well, we're coming into good things in our life. We're coming into prosperity. We're coming into blessing. We're coming into healing and deliverance. Well, we're protected by the grace of God during this time of craziness in the world. But we are protected, we are guarded, we are cared for because we're children of the King and you determine what does and what doesn't happen in our life. So Lord, we come this morning to thank you, to worship you, to magnify your name. We're going to open our mouths and sing tonight, today, Lord. We're going to take our hands and clap. We're going to raise them to you. If we need to dance, we're going to dance. But we're just here to be with you. So meet with us as we meet with you. In Jesus' name, we love you, Lord. We love you. Let's just wait and ride on into worship. Thank you, Father. The Bible says that all creation is waiting for the glory of God to be revealed. How many of you know we don't have to wait till a kingdom somewhere far off? But Jesus this morning is saying, I want to bring my kingdom to you. I want to bring my kingdom to your heart. And right where you're standing this morning, I want to reveal myself. Let's worship it.
the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. His name is Jesus. Oh, holy. Holy. Yeah. Surely His goodness and mercy follow me they follow me surely is goodness and mercy they follow me they follow me
recognition of his might and his power and his glory and his victory. We want to celebrate that and remember that. So we want to invite you down as we just continue to sing and worship to join us in taking the elements this morning. They're going to be stationed right here on each side of the stage. And so if you will, just go ahead and make your way down. Take a cup of juice. You'll find the bread located right underneath that cup. And let's remember this morning the way that he made when there was no way.
stop singing. Every breath we could ever 
to those around me. And I will build my life upon your love. It is I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, today we trust the one who built the foundation. God, the Bible says that you're the author and the finisher of our faith. And we trust you. trusting him in. Jesus, I trust you. God, you see the moves that we're about to make in our life, God. God, and I trust you. I trust you. Father, today I give you my children and I say I trust you with them. Come on, some of 
are trusting God for big things. If you've got something big in your life right now that you, that you trust God for, and you say, it's weak, I don't know how I can do it, but I, I want to trust God today for it. Would you lift your hand up really high this morning? we thank you that you're faithful and that all your promises are yes Amen. Father and all throughout scripture we read about a God who always provides and who always takes care of us and who always leads us and is always one step ahead God when we, didn't see, when we can't see we serve the God who sees all Father we look at stories of the Israelites and how God would call them to take steps of faith God, knowing the whole time what laid ahead of them. And so, Father, we thank you that today, no matter where we stand, you see what lays ahead of us. God, the psalmist says that a man plans his steps, but the Lord lays out his path. So, Father, this morning, I just declare that the path is being laid out before us, God, and we thank you, and we trust you that you have laid out a path, God, that you have clear-cut a path ahead of us, that you have leveled mountains, and that you have raised up valleys, and God, that what is lying ahead of us, God, is something much more glorious than what we've seen before. Jesus, we trust you today. We trust you today.
worship you, O oh Lord. We worship you. Just sing a new song to the Lord. David said, sing a new song to the Lord. Something from your heart. Just something from your heart. Bring the lights back down, Mike, if you will. Just bring them down. Two or three agree on anything, says the Lord. There I am, and whatever they ask, I'll do it for them. Lord, we agree, we agree that you're in charge of our lives. You protect our health. You provide for what we need, everything we need, Lord come before you.
Amen. Who receive the glory in your yes. Ass. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Amen. Good work. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Anybody have something going on in your life this week or of recent that God has just been teaching you something that would be a benefit to the rest of us that you'd like to share briefly? Anybody?
That's true. That's right. Rose again. What is your life? It is but a vapor. Here today and gone tomorrow. And you know, we have, in, in the book of Acts, there's a, uh, there's a verse of scripture. I don't even remember the context. That's not really significant at this point. But in, in this scripture, it says, David, in his generation, and then it says what it was that he did. We each have a generation. We have a, a time frame that we were created to be in, appointed to be to live in. And, and later on in the book of Acts, Paul said that we were uh, all created from one blood and appointed to live on all the face of the earth, uh, our times and our habitations, in order that we would seek for the Lord. It says that we're all made from one blood, but God has a time and a place for us. It's our generation. It's our time. And my generation is different than Parrish's generation will be. And and uh, and, and you younger guys, you know, y'all have y'all have your generation now. And it doesn't mean that I'm finished and to be put out to pasture. I got to keep taking care of those that are in my generation. I got to keep doing what I'm appointed to for that generation. And and that should bleed into what your generation is about because you are sons of the fathers and the forefathers that God that God uh, put before you and you're to glean from them, learn from them, follow them. But we all have our own little segment of time. And what you're talking about, James, is when you talk about sacrifice and if it cost a man his life, well, that was his generation. What difference does it make if he died at 20 or if he died at 80, if he accomplished his purpose for his time? for his appointment. I promise you, when you get over into eternity, when, when we enter into eternity, we will look back and we'll see what Job said, that this life is, is a shadow that passes by. It's a shadow. It's like sun went by in a day, your shadow came and your shadow went and it's over. The vapor one, I've said, I've told you this a number of times, you probably knew it anyway, but what, when he says your life is but a vapor here today and gone tomorrow, it's referring to a breath on a cold day. And when you, you know, you breathe out and here comes the cold air and then in a flash it's gone. That's our life. And so what we do with our life at this moment, at this time is, going to, is significant. It can be eternal. Or it can be just here today. The Bible says, while we look not at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen. Not on things of the earth, but at things above. For that which is seen is temporal, temporary, and that which is not seen is eternal. If we're living for what we can get out of life today, what we can amass for ourselves or, or store up or earn for ourselves, if we're living for to gratify our flesh and the things that we want today, well, you may can accomplish those things if you're one of the few that actually gets what you want in life. But it's very temporary, and it'll be gone. But you and I can do something in this life that's bigger than we are, greater than we are, that is the mighty working of God through a human vessel, a clay vessel, that can have an eternal impact. Think about this. If, if you won one person to the Lord, there is a soul that will be in heaven 
with the rest of us for eternity. Every good thing we do that blesses someone else is something that you can take as a reward. But all the things that we do for ourselves, they're like, they're like the grass of the field, James said. And actually, James was quoting Peter, I think, and he was quoting an Old Testament prophet. This scripture is quoted several times in the Bible. But it's, it talks about our, our life is like, it's like grass in a field. And it grows up and it withers and it blossoms a flower. I mean, it blossoms a flower and then it withers and it goes away and it's, and it's over. And God wants more for us than that. Daryl, do you mind if I say something along those lines? Kind of? Yeah. Exactly what Pastor Daryl's saying right now. He's been, God's been speaking to me over the last week and a half. And you guys know that, <clears throat> a lot of you know that full time I'm a law enforcement officer. And uh, a week ago, I was called to a call where we got a call saying that there was a man who was committing or, uh, threatening to commit suicide. And he had sent a picture of where he was at to his loved ones and he was up on a very high place overlooking what looked like the interstate and God just brought to my, my mind exactly where he was. I believe it was a God thing. Wow. And uh, I was the first on scene, I pulled up and there's a man sitting on a cliff overlooking I-65 ready to jump. And I walked towards him. And I called him by his first name and he looked at me and he started crying and he started walking by me and he said, I don't know where else to go. And I began to just ask him questions, you know, the, the normal cop questions. What's got you here? What's so bad in your life that you feel like you can't make it any further? And he said, you know, I went and I sat at a church for two hours earlier today, hoping something would be different. And he kept telling me a story. Well, as he's telling me a story, more and more cops got there. The state troopers got there. Sergeants got there. Detectives got there. There was multiple people there. And God pulled up something on the inside of me. And he said, this is your moment. And he was, God was screaming at me. And the Spirit of God on the inside was screaming at me. He says, he's already told you what he's looking for. Yeah. He already told you he came to my house looking for something different. But that thought, I'm human just like the rest of you thought is, man, I'm surrounded by sergeants and what are they going to think? And I'm surrounded by state troopers and EMS and what are they going to say? And I know that this guy's an atheist and this guy's agnostic and we've had all those conversations and so I know who I'm surrounded with and I keep telling myself, Matthew, just sit here and do the cop thing. Just sit here and get him to the hospital. Get him in an ambulance. And I just kept pushing. But it got to a point where God said, if, if we're not going to do this, why, why are we doing it at all? And so God was, God really spoke to me in that moment. And I said, you know what? Before you go in that ambulance, you told me you went to God's house looking for something. The problem is you were looking for something at an empty building. You weren't looking for the person who possesses the body of Christ. And so I began to pray with him. And he, he weeped as, he, as we prayed. And I just prayed. God, I pray that you would draw this man to you. Yeah. God, I know his, his head's not in the right spot right now. I know that he's messed up and his thinking's all messed up and his chemicals are all over the place. God, but over the next few days, even as you begin to work out those things naturally, I pray that spiritually you would draw him and that he would remember this moment. And as I drove away from that all night, I thought, man, I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> I know I am. They're going to call me in the office tomorrow. I'm going to... But God spoke to me that night and he said exactly what Pastor Darrell was just saying. You are not living in the middle of the coronavirus for no reason. That's right. You're not living in the middle of chaos for no That's reason. That's right. Come on. See, we've been focused on, oh, we want to get back to church. We want to get back to life as normal. We don't want to wear a mask. We've been focusing on all these things and how it affects us. And I felt like God told me, settle in. Yeah. Settle in. Yeah. Forget the restlessness and settle in where I've put you. Because I have something more. So that night, I just as I laid in bed, uh, this week I've been getting up extremely early and going to the gym, and I've had a lot of time by myself, and just God's been working that in my heart. So my prayer every morning has been, God, today I settle. I choose to settle in where you put Amen. me. Amen. And I want you to show me exactly the more that you have. 
out of that one incident, word began to spread through our sheriff's department. And I had people coming up to me in the hallway and say, hey, did you pray with the man? Yeah. Hey, did you pray with that guy who was suicidal the other day? Detectives walking up who weren't on scene and saying, man, I heard what you did on the side of the road and I respect you for it. And they would say, you know, I don't believe like that, but I respect you for it. Or I watched your video and I saw the reaction that man had. Wow. The ripple effect of that one decision yeah. has reached every corner of our sheriff's department. Yeah. It's reached a man who was sitting in a psych ward. It's reached the ambulance service. It's reached state troopers. All because I took a moment, and even though I didn't want to and I resisted it, I gave in to God and said, God, I want the more than what I can see or feel. It's exactly what Pastor Darrell once said. He was just sharing that. I just felt like, man, I need to share this. You are here in this moment for a reason. And just like Esther was told in the Old Testament, do not think that salvation will not come from somewhere else. God said, do not think that he won't raise somebody else up if you won't. Yeah. And so that's that's just my I was inspired. Amen. Praise, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Paul said, How will they know without a preacher? And who will go who will go unless they're sent? How will they know without a preacher? How will they know? I've been thinking this week, Chris and I talked a little bit this week about the fact that really what what you're alluding to, Matthew. There's, there may have never been a greater day in our lifetime to evangelize than right now. Corona has people scared out of their socks. <laughs> you know? COVID, COVID that is, I guess. It's got people scared. People are terrified. And uh, all that's going on in the media and all, uh, you know, you know. People are, people are ripe unto harvest. Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. How many of you think sin is abounding in our nation right now? You know, this thing that we're seeing culturally and everything else, it's moral. It's moral. It's much deeper than the surface. All things are deeper than the surface. The issue is never the issue. The issue is not race. Don't get caught in that trap. The issue is not race. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, rulers of the darkness. If you get caught up on issues like viruses and racial disputes and political matters, and, and you become driven by those thoughts, then you're driven by the flesh. You're not driven by the Spirit. Spirit's not in that. Spirit is not in that. Paul said there is no distinction. There is therefore now no distinction between Jew, Greek, barbarian, Scythian, male or female. But all are one in Christ. If we get hung up on race, on sexual, uh, what do they call it? Orientation. If we get hung up on politics and we let politics divide us. And and sure, there's a division in politics. There are divisions in race. There are divisions in these things. But they don't have to divide us unless we carry that and we let that become more important than the unity of the faith. Ephesians, the book of Ephesians is all about the need for unity in the church. And it says that God, that, uh, that Jesus first descended in the lower parts of the earth who also ascended long story there but it said he gave gifts to men some to be apostles some prophets some pastors some evangelists and some teachers then he tells why he gave these gifts to the church for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry those ministry offices are given to equip the church to do the ministry you know, the church, American church has had this thing upside down for decades where everybody thought it was a pastor's job to hospital, do hospital visitation. No, that's your job. That's your job. You're supposed to love each other enough that when somebody's sick, you go to them. You don't pick up the phone and call the pastor and say, hey, did you go visit so-and-so? 
You should have been a pastor about 20 years ago. Right now, everything's a mess. But 20, 10, 20, 15 years ago, I'd have people call me up and all but chew me out because I didn't visit a family member. Hey, buddy, that's your job. <laughs> oh, don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. So, the gifts of, that, God, that Jesus gave to the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, are for the work of the ministry, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. But then he goes on and he says this, until we come to the unity of the faith. So let me say this to you. If you're not at unity with the faith right here, you're in sin. And so what you got to do is, and, and when you say the word sin, we, we repel to that. It just means to miss the mark. You're missing the mark. You're missing the point. If you're out of unity with your brothers and your sisters, then you need to identify where does, what is the mark that I'm missing. Well, that's real easy to do. You just go back to your heart and say, what's dividing me from someone? Is it that I don't like the color of their eyes? Is it that they, want, they wanted the carpet to be red and I wanted the carpet to be blue? Where did the issue where did the issue come that divided you from the one that you loved last month? Well, then that's where the sin lies. Because it's sin, the Bible says, that separates. And so God has called us to be one body. And he actually goes so far in the scripture as to teach us that when we become one, it'll be time for Jesus to return. So we just need to get this thing right, y'all. We need to love each other. And we need to let go of all of our issues and put them all under the blood and let God be God. Let God fix your brother. Believe me, I would love to go out and deal with some things in our, in our culture, like you said, James, on Facebook. I'd like to jump in there and climb inside of Facebook and say, I'm going to fix all y'all right now. Because I got opinions. I got, I, but you know what? And yes, I like some things that I like. And I have a right to that. And you have a right to that. It's okay to voice your opinion. It's not okay to separate yourself from the one you love over an issue. The issue is never the issue. The issue is about the heart. What's hurt in your heart. What's broken in your heart. That an issue can fire you up to the point that you will turn away from your brother your sister in the Lord. And let the devil divide you. Jesus himself said this. He said, a house. See, y'all know this. A house divided among itself cannot stand. This country is in bad shape because we're a house divided. We can't let the church be a house divided. We've got to be, we've got to stand together. We've got to rise up together. We've got to not agree on every issue. That's not unity. Unity is not that I agree with you. Uh, I'm this party, you're that party. I'm independent, you're whatever. You know, it's, it, it, unity is not that we agree on the issue. Unity is that we agree to keep harmony and peace and to seek the will of the Lord together. And to say, God, where are we going? We're going to follow you. That's what it is. And God is calling us to be a people of unity. Why? Because we now are in these kind of situations because of the culture, because of, because of the world, because of all that's happening. We, we have opportunity now to speak up and to be that voice like never before. I just think it's awesome, Matthew, that that spread through his police department. But you know what my thought was when he said that? How sad that that's not the norm for believers in that office and in every office why is that not the norm in the business where you work the industry that you're involved in if you're a General Motors employee has your voice spread through the plant if you work for the medical field I know some of you do are you known in your setting as a person who will speak about Christ when you need to. And this is not to sound condemning. There's no condemnation in that. It's, it's to urge you and to prompt you. That I, I, I went out walking last night. I had a, had a day that to me was a very stressful day. And, and I was wired. And I'm like, it was like 9.30. I meant to go to the, to the gym and do my treadmill thing. And I didn't do it. 
And I, I told Lori, I said, I got to walk. I got to walk. I took off, and I walked this neighborhood of where we, we live right here. I walked that neighborhood like mad. I had, I had a, uh, I've got a walking stick that Paul made me. It's awesome. And uh, so I'm, I, got your, I got your walking stick, and I'm walking. I walked for about probably 45 minutes at about 100 miles an hour. And I'm making my last, I actually came here, walked around the church, turned the air conditioner on, walked back, kept going. I was everywhere. And so my last strip up one street in front of our house, and I was going to go to the top of the hill, turn around and come back. And, and I, I, I'm already feeling release. If you're stressed out, you need to walk. I just want to tell you that's beside that. But so I'm doing all this walking, and I see somebody coming over the hill. Well, I'm walking and praying. And... And I'm just praying. And, and honestly, when I first started walking, I was so stressed, I couldn't even hardly pray. I couldn't even get started. It's like it just, I was just wired. I, and so, but as I got going, I just said, you know what? I've got to spend this time with the Lord. So I start praying. So I'm walking and talking, right? I'm headed up that last little strip. Another man, now it's, mind you, it's 10 o'clock at night. Another man comes walking in the distance way off. And I'm like, well, this is a little weird, you know, 10 o'clock at night, I'm walking out here, and here comes this guy, and we're both in the dark with a little street lamp, and, I, and it came to me, because I'm praying, and it came to me, how long has it been since you just approached somebody like that and started talking to them about the Lord? And I had to face that, because I'm the guy that loves to witness, and I used to do it all the time, lots and lots, and everywhere I went, and I'm, and I'm not doing that like I used to, and so it was like, how long has it been? since you did that and so I'm thinking okay well do you stop a guy at 10 o'clock at night in the street and say hey let's talk or what do you do so he's coming over the hill and here I come and I'm pondering and I'm kind of like okay how am I going to do this or what am I going to do and then his form became visible and it was Seth my son <laughs> he was out walking I said are you doing what I'm doing he said what's that I said I'm just trying to walk stress off <laughs> He started laughing, and I said, I'm just walking and talking. And so then we turned around, we walked back. But I was faced with, with that, and, and that, that hit my heart again. How long has it been so, since I was just an open book? Just an open book. You know, church is not what church used to be. Y'all know that. That's great. Because it's just really real right now, isn't it? I mean, Things are, emotions are raw. People who are coming are coming because they know they want to be around the body of Christ and be in the presence of the Lord. It's just a, it's a good time. It's a good time to be in the faith. It's a really good time to bring somebody into the faith with you. The loss will fit in this group. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell you what I learned as a pastor a lot of what when when we when 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 you have the hype and we've had we've had seasons where this church was just packed full of people and tens of people dancing and flags and banners and and all kinds of stuff and lots of prophecy and and just you know we we've had those 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 seasons in the church and and man I tell you there were times that the loss just didn't fit in that it was too spiritual stretching that term to me more than it really does, right? Y'all know what I'm saying? But right now, this is not forced. This is not hype. This is not anticipated. It's not expected. It's not anything we stir up or anything we do. We're here because for once, we know we just need God. We just need the Lord. And man, as long as we keep that heart, the loss can fit in here. So we need to bring them. So we need to bring them. I just want to, I want to ask each one of you, and we're going we're gonna to close. I'm not going to preach, obviously. I, I just did that. Well, you could say that. Uh, but we're going to close. But I want to ask you to take just a moment of silent prayer or contemplation, if you will. Just talk to the Lord and ask God, hey, well, what do I need to be doing right now? What's my part of the kingdom of God in 2020 what is my part and I can tell you what he's not going to tell you anything you've been reading on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter 
or Fox News or CNN and NBC and Bob and whatever. It, 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 it's going to be something about our personal lives. So let's just pray. Let's do that. I, I want you to sincerely do that. Lord, why am I here in this generation, at this moment, in this time? Why was I born for such a time as this? What is it that I'm to do? Because every one of us has something we can do tomorrow, the next day. So, Father, we just ask you that, Lord. That's what we're asking. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I thought I better leave us here. Lord, what are we here for? Is it just to make a paycheck? To have some children, marry and have some children, and raise a family, and hopefully by the end of our life own a home? Maybe be able to go on some vacations and travel a little bit when we retire? Is that what we're here for? What is this life really about, Lord? What, what can I do, what can we do that will have an eternal impact on the lives of other people? That's our question. That's our question for you today, Lord. Father, I ask you to talk to us. Lord, I remember last night when I was walking and praying, just basically saying this very thing. God, what? What? What are you trying to say to me? I want to hear you. I want to hear you, Father. What are you saying? And so, Lord, that's what we're asking again today. And I pray, God, that you would birth in this body just a fresh anointing and calling and desire to be the voice of God to everyone who's in under the influence of our voice. God, we've got family that don't know you. We've got work associates that don't know you are are, are are people we run into people in the store some of us have made relationships with people at the cash register that we see daily or weekly having never thought that they could be dying and going to hell without Jesus and just our, our smile is not enough it's not enough just to be a witness how will they know without a preacher, the Bible says? And who will go? Send me, Lord. Put the words in our mouths. Put, put in our heart what you put in Matthew's heart. A voice that says, if you don't do this, what's it really all about anyway? And then you put words in our mouths because we don't know what to say. But you do. Every person is a different situation. Every need is different. Every heart is different. But your answer is the same. The old song, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. And that's the message that we bring. You just, just Jesus. We thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, that, that you're going to use us. We bless your name, Father. Lord, go with us from here today now. Lord, I just ask you to bless everybody in here. I pray that this is going to be the best day that we've had in a long time. I pray that you heal those that are sick today, Lord. Let a wave of healing flow through the room, God. I pray that you lift depression off of those who are heavy laden with burden and stress and worry. God, we just take authority over depression. And speak joy and life into the hearts of those who are heavy laden, Father. Jesus said to cast our cares upon you because you care for us. All ye that are heavy laden, cast your cares upon me for I care for you, Jesus said. We're doing that today, Lord. God, just give us a day of joy. Give us a fresh, renewed vision for tomorrow. And use us, Lord. We belong to you. We love you. We're sons in your house. Use us, Father, to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, good. No announcements today. We're going to let them go. Now, we do have movie night coming up. Chris is going to begin that again. It'll be this Saturday at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. So I want to encourage you to come out for that. He, he had a good point. He said, Pastor, I feel like we need to do movie nights again. He said, with COVID, all the theaters are shut down, and people really don't have anything to do on Saturday and Friday. So we'll be doing that. We'll be gathering here together to watch a movie. And po there's posters out there. You can look and get the information about that. Uh, that's about it. God bless you all. And to all, a good day. Bless you.